Alrighty guys, the plan for today is to get Ugly Truck one step closer to tuning and running on the dyno. My name's LT, and on this channel we build custom and high performance trucks. And if you are new to the channel, first of all, welcome. And second of all, here's a quick rundown of where we're at with the project. This is Ugly Truck, it's a 2000 Silverado 1500 extended cab short box two wheel drive. And from the outside, it looks just like an old worn out high mileage beat up work truck. And that's basically because it is. This particular example has just over 326,000 miles on the odometer. And I actually like the look of it. I love the faded hood and it just kind of fits my personality. But underneath the hood, that's what makes this truck different. This is an 8.1 liter big block. That's 496 cubic inches. And just for good measure, we fabricated a single turbo kit and it's got an S480 bolted off to the side. Now I do have an ultimate goal of over a thousand horsepower at the wheels, but we got a stock motor for now, so obviously we're not gonna make a thousand horsepower on a stock 8.1, but stay tuned because eventually we are gonna build the motor and turn up the boost. But before I do any of that, I've just gotta drive it and I've gotta tune it on the stock motor and on low boost. And to do that, I'm gonna show you guys and I'm going to install what I consider to be the three most important gauges you can have on any high performance gasoline powered car or truck. Because number one, it'll make your life a little bit easier when it comes to tuning. And number two, it lets you keep an eye on your engine's vitals to make it live just a little bit longer and a little bit happier kind of life. So here's what we're gonna be working with today. I grabbed an AEM wide band air fuel ratio gauge. I grabbed an auto meter electric fuel pressure gauge and a mechanical boost and vacuum gauge, as well as a small adapter to install the sensor in the fuel rail, and then a triple pillar pod to keep all the gauges mounted and looking, I don't know, kind of stylish. Now there's one gauge that's the most important in my opinion, and that's the wide band air fuel ratio gauge. And basically that's gonna tell you at what mixture your engine is running, fuel mixture. Now every engine is different and every setup likes something a little bit different specific to its own engine. There's no universal air fuel ratio that every engine should run at. But in general terms, this is generally speaking, at idle and partial throttle cruising down the highway, you want to be somewhere around 14.6 or 14.7 to 1. That's 14 and a half parts of air and one part of fuel. And at wide open throttle, depending on if you're naturally aspirated or turbocharged, again, every setup is different, but you wanna be richer than that. Somewhere usually between 11 and a half to 12 and a half to one. And the wideband air fuel ratio gauge, not only does it display the air fuel ratio, but this one in particular, it'll output a zero to five volt analog signal that I can plug into my HP tuners interface. So when I'm data logging, I can overlay that information with things like RPM, throttle position, and manifold pressure. And I can use that information to make corrections or basically to tune the truck. And that's why I consider the wideband to be the most important gauge on any high performance car or truck, especially if you're tuning it for the first time. Now, as far as the other two gauges are concerned, we've got fuel pressure and vacuum and boost. Vacuum and boost, that's an easy one. It's just a good idea to kind of keep an eye on it and let you know where your engine's running at. Let's say you have a boost leak. Well, that'll be a pretty clear indicator on there because your boost is lower than usual. Or let's say you've got a brand new setup. You haven't run it before and you've got a wastegate that maybe is a little bit too small or you've got a different wastegate spring in than you anticipated. Again, the boost gauge will let you know where the, running, where the engine's running at and if you need to take your foot out because you've got twice the amount of boost that you thought you should have. And as far as fuel pressure is concerned, this can help in a couple different ways as well. Let's say your fuel pump in the tank is a little bit too small for what you need. Under wide open throttle, your fuel pressure might drop, which could cause a dangerous lean condition. The fuel pressure gauge will let you know what's going on. Also, conversely, let's say you installed a big massive electric fuel pump in the tank, like I'm about to do in a future upload. Well, the fuel pressure gauge will let you know whether or not your regulator is returning enough of that excess capacity back to the tank so your fuel pressure isn't too high. And that's why I think those three gauges are the most important ones and I try to install them on every performance build that I do. So, that's a lot of information, that's a lot of talking, so let's get to installing.
Anytime I'm installing gauges or really anything electrical, I kind of think of it as a game of connect the dots. And the first job is to get all the dots exactly where they need to be. And for me, there were three. The first one is the wideband O2 sensor, which is mounted down there in the downpipe. Now, if you look at the instructions, they suggest that you keep it in this particular kit about 30 inches away from the uh, turbo outlet. Now, I don't have room 30 inches away. My sensor is located about 19 to 20 inches away, and I think we'll be okay. I know a lot of people will even run it a little bit closer than that. Uh, but obviously, the closer you have it to the turbo, the hotter the sensor is going to get, and you potentially can shorten the lifespan of the sensor if it gets too hot. But like I said, I think we'll be okay. The next sensor that I had to install was for the fuel pressure gauge, and it taps into the fuel rail on the passenger side using this adapter. This goes from dash 4AN, which is what the threads are on the rail, to 1 8 inch NPT. And then I just grabbed an 8 inch NPT elbow that sends it back at a 90 degree angle just so the sensor doesn't stand up and hit the hood. And finally, we're going to tap into the little port that goes between the intake manifold and the pressure regulator right there. I took the line off already, but it just is a short line to go from here. So there, I'll tee in, and that's where the boost gauge is going to get its reference from. Now, I did take the harness, and I taped everything up, and I protected it with that plastic convoluted tubing. So for the most part, it kind of looks factory. All the factory wires are covered in this stuff here. Um, so it looks real nice, and I stopped the wrapping right after it's going to pass through the firewall because these wires are going to go in a couple different directions depending on what they go to. Now, speaking of getting through the firewall, that's the next challenge that we need to tackle. And on these Silverados, you know, the 99 to 06s, and even some of the newer trucks, I usually go through on the passenger, or sorry, the driver's side, there's a big port right down, that's too bright, kind of right down in that area there. You can see that big giant grommet. There's usually enough room where you can kind of cut through the top side of it. You won't disturb the factory wiring if you're careful. Obviously, that is a risk if you just take like a drill bit and jam it through there. You don't want to cut any of your factory harness, but there's plenty of room between the main chunk of the harness and the firewall to get some stuff passed through. So we'll get a whole cut in it and we'll pass the wires through and we'll wire up the gauges. Alrighty, jumping ahead in time just by a little bit, we got the wiring routed and the gauge pod is prepared and we're ready to mount the gauges in the truck. And the very last step after that will be to make a few connections for wiring and we can start it up and see if the gauges are going to work, which obviously they're going to. Now, the gauge pod that I'm using is made by these guys right here. Uh, I definitely would not recommend it. This is a two-piece design. It slips over the stock A-pillar. Now, I didn't mind cutting it up because someone already put a hole in there for a tweeter. Uh, so I didn't mind putting a couple extra holes in there, but if I had to do it again, I would not choose this one. I kind of cheaped out. It was only like 50 bucks. Um, the autometer ones, they make a triple and a dual pillar pod. That's a complete replacement. I've used them before and they fit a lot better and everything lines up. Um, but like I said, I cheaped out. That's my mistake. So shame on me. But the problem, I'll show you what the problem is. 
um, the boost gauge I've got mounted down here in the bottom, and that's the only position I could mount it in. And you can kind of see how it touches down there and it opens up at the top. Well, that's because these mechanical boost gauges, they have a kind of long fitting on the back and it's actually touching the bottom and that's what forces it off to an angle. I originally wanted the boost gauge in the middle, but you can see kind of that sharper angle there compared to this one. Well, it definitely would not have fit in the middle or the top. And also, none of the gauges really seem to be on the same plane. So I am frustrated, but like I said, it's my own fault. I cheaped out and I'll probably end up yanking this thing apart and I'll just go get an auto meter one in the future if it bugs me enough. But I'll get it in and I'll see how it looks. I'll give it a fair shake. So um, one last thing I wanted to show you guys, which was kind of cool to find. I've been having a, a battery drain issue where if I leave the truck parked for like two weeks and I don't touch it, the battery will be dead when I come out to you know start the truck up and I've got to jump it. And I've been, ever since I bought the thing, I've been fighting this, trying to figure out what it is. And when I pulled the lower dashboard apart to run the wiring for the gauges, I found it. Check it out. Um, evidently at some point in this truck's life, it was at one of those buy here, pay here uh, car dealers. And this is a GPS tracker, it's kind of interesting. Basically what it does is it goes into the ignition signal, there's two wires here, um, and it interrupts the ignition signal so they can remotely kill your truck, like say if you don't pay your note or whatever. So I yanked that thing out of there and uh, I noticed the battery or the lights on the little GPS module thing, they were constantly on. So I think, and I'm hoping that's what was draining the power down on the battery. But anyway, that's just a little aside there. Uh, so we'll get the gauges mounted, we'll get everything plumbed up, and wired up and we'll start the truck. We've got the gauges completely installed, they're wired up, and everything seems to be doing exactly what it should be, which means the only thing stopping me from tuning the truck is a bigger fuel pump in the tank, and we'll take care of that probably in the next upload. Now, as far as fit and finish of the gauge pod is concerned, I told you guys I'd give it a chance, I'd install it and see what I thought. Well, my opinion has not changed. The big problem down here is with the boost gauge. Obviously, it won't go all the way in, and that's due to the, the outlet of the fitting. It just kind of interferes with the curve on the bottom of the pot. Now, sure, you could put an electric boost gauge in and prevent that, but you can also put a better pot in to do the same thing because the other problem is just the angle that the gauges sit at. Like this one right here, it's like it's tipped back quite a bit, and the gauge is all the way square in. And they all seem to be at a little bit different angle. So I think I'm going to toss this one and ultimately get a new autometer gauge pot. The last thing I did was install two wires, the white ones from the wideband 0 to 5 volt output. The gray one is just to ground. I just kind of ran them up here above the steering column. And I'll put a little green plug on here that comes with the uh, HP Tuner's interface. And then whenever I'm data logging, all I've got to do is plug that into the HP Tuner's interface and it'll record the air fuel ratio and we can overlay it over things like, you know, RPM and manifold pressure so we can make corrections to the fuel table. But anyway, that's a later date and I will show you guys all that as well. If you're new to the channel, I want to say thanks for stopping by, thanks for subscribing, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe, and check back next time because we got some more great content coming up for the ugly truck, because remember, we're going to have this thing on the road very soon. Thanks for stopping by. My name's LT.